Okay, uh, now that we've got our graph all set to go, now it's time to do a statistical analysis on this data. And uh, of course, if you look at the data here, we're comparing two groups. Uh, we have one group or one treatment uh, where the symploids were exposed to parasites. And then we have a second treatment where they were exposed to both parasites and herbicides. And our measurement variable or our dependent variable is the percent affected. And so this is a, a, a data set that is uh, perfect for using a t-test. Uh, a t-test compares uh, two groups for some continuous measurement variable. And of course, again, this in this case, it's the percent affected. So before we do our statistical analysis, we have to come up with our uh, statistical hypotheses, our so-called null and alternative hypotheses. And I've uh, generated those for you down below the graph. You can see um, our null hypothesis is uh, a uh, hypothesis of no difference. That is the mean. Mu is the symbol for the population mean. The mean for the parasite treatment is equal to the mean for the parasite plus herbicide treatment. That's our, our null hypothesis. Again, a hypothesis of no difference. Our alternative hypothesis could be one of three different hypotheses. One could be uh, that the mean for parasites is just not equal to the mean for parasites and herbicides. Uh, alternatively, we could specify a direction of difference in our alternative hypothesis. So uh, we might uh, pose an alternative hypothesis that the mean for the parasites uh, is greater than the mean for the combined uh, treatment, or uh, we could also specify a less than hypothesis. So if we have some information or uh, if we're interested in a direction of difference coming into this experiment, uh, then we would uh, pose one of these bottom two alternative hypotheses. If we really have no prior information or just want to know if they're different in some way, we would pose this alternative hypothesis. Well, coming into this experiment, I think we were probably interested in whether the addition of herbicides to the parasites, that is the second treatment here, if that somehow enhances the negative health effects uh, on symploids, that is, does it increase the percent affected in some way, shape, or form? So I think that this experiment is ripe for an um, a alternative hypothesis that specifies the direction of difference. And so uh, if we do that, then the kind of t-test that we use is what we call a one-tail t-test. Uh, essentially, that puts all of the probability uh, that we're interested in in one sort of end of the normal distribution tail um, uh, when we're comparing these. And so uh, we're going to do a one-tail test. And uh, in order to do a t-test, we have to um, go up to our data analysis. And um, that's in the data tab. And then if you scroll on over, you'll see that the data analysis tab is already there. If it's not there uh, in your Microsoft Excel, then you'll, of course, have to load that data analysis add-in. And the instructions for doing that are in the inferential statistics guide posted on Oaks. And so it's right there at the very beginning. It gives you the instructions for how to do that. Alternatively, you could Google it. Um, anyway, so there's the data analysis up there. We're going to go ahead and choose that. And you can see a nice box opens that gives us a whole variety of different statistical analyses. In this class, you know, we're generally interested in one of three tests, perhaps four. Um, one, one is the t-test, and you can see those right here, uh, a regression analysis. And then uh, a third test that we could potentially be interested in is what's called a chi-square analysis. Um, but for this experiment, we're, of course, interested in the t-test. There are a couple different choices here. One is uh, to decide whether to use a paired t-test or a two-sample uh, t-test. Uh, in this case, because our two treatments are completely separate, treated separately, not connected in any way, we would choose a two-sample t-test. Another a name for this test is sometimes uh, an independent samples t-test. We would use a paired t-test if um, in some way our two treatment groups were connected, like maybe we treated the first group 
um, for a few weeks, and then later on we treated that same group differently in some way. Um, in that case, the two treatment groups are connected, uh, but in this case they're not. So we're going to assume we're going to use a two-sample test. And the next choice we have to make is whether we're going to use an equal variance or unequal variance test. Um, so usually uh, it's best to just make this decision by looking at the variation around your means. If it's uh, fairly close, similar across the two groups, then I'd choose an equal variance test. If you see a, a, you know, a dramatic difference in the variation around the mean, you know, one is a small, a small variation around the mean, the other, the other has a really large variation around the mean, you might choose an unequal variance test. In this case, the variances are pretty similar, so we're going to choose an equal variance test. We'll hit OK. And uh, you can see these boxes appear here. And uh, I've done a test earlier, so I'm going to delete those. Um, so anyway, we're interested in comparing the week four data here, this very last week. We can't compare across all of these means um, because really we're changing two things. Uh, if we were to lump all these means together here, we're changing time, yeah, that is the x-axis, and also we're changing the way these two are treated. And, and we don't usually want to do that in a statistical test. We only want one thing changing. And so in this case, we're just going to keep time the same. So we'll just we'll compare week four here. And uh, um, we're going to do that across our two groups. And so uh, to do that, uh, we're going to Go ahead and, and click on this box here and I'm going to go ahead and find the week four data, the week four data for the group that just got the parasites and uh, we're interested in the percent affected. And so that data is right there. We're going to highlight that data right there, close the parentheses. And then the variable two range is going to be the week four for the other group. So we're going to close that. And we're going to scroll down our data set and we're going to find the week four for that group. And there it is right there. So we're going to highlight that data. And there you go. Okay. Uh, we're going to go ahead and put our output range to a particular place in the spreadsheet. And so I like right below our null hypothesis. So we'll put it right there and just click on that cell. There you go. Uh, our hypothesized mean difference is zero. Um, again, that's like the null hypothesis a mean difference of zero or no difference. Our alpha is our p-value cutoff. Um, that's the cutoff we're going to use to make a decision as to whether to fail to reject or reject the null hypothesis. And so now we've got everything we need in there and we're going to hit OK. And it goes ahead and puts our t-test table right there in the uh, spreadsheet. If we need to, we can you know, change the width of this column uh, so that everything's there. I like to put a little label below that that just reminds me what we've tested here, particularly if you're doing multiple tests in an experiment. You know, you want to keep track of which tests uh, correspond to which variables. And so this is the uh, comparison of um, the uh, parasite, uh, excuse me, comparison of the percent affected. Uh, for the parasites, I'll just abbreviate it, versus the parasites plus herbicides, okay? So those two groups. And so that, that then just reminds us what this test is for. Let's go up and just bold base that. So it's there, okay, cool. And of course, uh, the, the, the um, values that we're interested in reporting typically here is um, some measure of sample size. You're um, degrees of freedom is that here. Um, and so uh, we've got our degrees of freedom is six. So it's uh, um, the T stat here is the test statistic that uh, is calculated in the, uh, in, the um, in the T test. And then uh, down below that we have our P values here. And since we're doing a one tailed test, uh, we're interested in this P value right here. And there it is at 0 0.09. Uh, and so 0 0.09 is greater than 0 0.05, our alpha or our cutoff value. And so in this case, we would fail to reject 
the null hypothesis, okay? And uh, that's because that p-value is greater than 0.05. In short, what it's saying is that there's a, there's a really good chance, uh, you know, about a 10% chance almost, that the differences between these two groups are just chance sample error or not accounted for or explained by uh, the way we treated these two groups. And 10% is a lot to a scientist, and so we're going to go ahead and reject that null hypothesis include, and conclude that there really is no significant difference between these two groups. That is, any differences we're seeing in this sample, and again, these are samples that are representative of the larger population of symploids, any differences in these samples are just the result of sample error, or they're unexplained. We don't know what's causing these differences. They're not being accounted for or explained in this experiment. And so uh, we would conclude that, uh, again, you know, these two treatment groups aren't different. Um, and that's interesting uh, when you think about this. Uh, um, coming in, you might have thought that perhaps adding herbicides to this um, could make it more likely that uh, symploids would get sick or be affected in some way. But this analysis seems to suggest that that's not the case at all. Okay? Okay, so now I'd like to talk a little bit about drawing conclusions from your data. Uh, so if we take a look at the graph that we've constructed here, um, the results so far have indicated that there really is no significant difference between the parasite group and the group where we added parasites and herbicides. This kind of seems a bit counterintuitive. Um, I might have thought going into this experiment that adding herbicides along with parasites would um, more negatively affect the health of symploids and therefore might have thought we uh, the percent affected should go up in that orange group, the group where we combine both parasites and herbicides. But that's not, not what we found. We found no significant effect here. Um, so um, it is true that in this experiment, um, the percent sick and the percent dead were not the only things that were measured in this experiment. They also measured, um, if we scroll on up, uh, the parasite load, MPL, and the mean blood toxicant level which is a measure of the concentration of herbicide in the blood of these individuals. And so that was definitely uh, also measured in this experiment. The other thing I want to make note of in this experiment is um, that uh, when we separate out percent sick and dead, we start to see some interesting things happen in this. And, and so one way to go and just kind of explore your data a little bit more is um, to start by um, separating the headers from the rest of the data so that those headers are always in view. And so one way to do that is to just put your cursor up in the upper left corner but below the header, okay? Go up to view and then choose split. And what that does is it keeps the headers up there so as we scroll down the data that those headers stay there. And that I think helps as we kind of scroll through this data and look for some in interesting features of it. So let's start by looking in these last few weeks uh, of the uh, treatment where only parasites were affected. You can see that in these last few weeks that the percent sick is very high starting in week two, but the percent dead is really low. Um, and of course, if we sum those two, we get these high numbers of, excuse me, if we sum those two, we get these high numbers of percent affected here to the left. You can see clearly that in this last week, the parasite load is high, but we don't, have, of course, have any herbicides uh, in, in our symploids because they weren't um, exposed to them in, in the treatment. Well, let's scroll down to weeks three and four of our um, treatment where we applied both parasites and herbicides. And you can see that it's in weeks, again, in weeks uh, two, three, and four, that we see the percent sick going up. But you'll notice that in comparison to the earlier treatment, the percent dead is much, much higher. Uh, and then, of course, the sum of those two yielding the percent affected yields results that are fairly similar across the treatment groups. 
So by combining those, we might have been missing an essential feature of this data. So one of the things that seems to be happening here is that the parasites make the symploids sick, but they don't really kill them. Only a few died in that treatment. But if we scroll down and look at the other group, you can see that um, adding the parasites did make a lot sick. But when we also add the herbicides, the number that die goes way up. Okay. And so maybe it would be a good idea to also do a comparison of the percent dead in each group to see if those are significantly different across groups. And so I'm going to let you try to do that for homework or in discussion. Try to create a graph that now has four groups on it. Two of the groups are just like the graph we created, the ones where we're comparing just uh, parasites and parasites and herbicides for percent effective. I would like you to add two more series to this graph, which compares the percent dead in each of our treatment groups, and then do a statistical analysis on that data to see if the percent dead are significantly different across our two groups.